Okay, year 10, we're going to have a series of videos this week on helping you guys learn how to write a response to an analytical essay question in poetry. Okay, you've done plenty of this in prose, but now we need to try uh, using our essay skills in poetry writing. A little of, of this might be um, revision, but um, probably there's a few people, um, at, or maybe lots of you, that um, don't mind a little bit of refreshing on what it is you need to be doing in an analytical essay. Okay, um, I'll, throughout the videos I'll have examples and building examples, and sometimes I'll ask you to pause and try something on your own. So what you need to be ready with is um, have your copy of the poem. Um, if you can print a fresh copy of the poem to interact with, I would recommend that. I'll, I'll have the file uploaded um, for you to be able to do that. I realize not everybody uh, can print, um, but if it's possible, it's a good idea. Okay, and then of course a few pens or highlighters to work with as well. If not, the copy that you annotated last week is fine. And also you should have your um, exercise book out too, okay? Because um, you're going to want to take notes and you're going to want to um, respond to the prompts. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I'm not going to read through the poem just yet. Let me sh introduce you to the question that we're going to be looking at first. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, well, the LO that I have here is that we want to understand the components of analytical essay and how to construct paragraphs for essays. Um, you, just like in prose, you're going to have a set question that your essay needs to be in response to. Uh, essays that are asked in IGCSC literature exams must be analytical. And I know that you've heard me say this before, but in order to analyze, you must be addressing or talking about, or your paragraphs need to be focused on the how, the how and the why, okay? How a poet conveys something, how they communicate something, how they create effects, um, or why the quote why the metaphor, why the emotive language that you have selected to discuss, why it creates the effect that you're claiming it, it, it creates, okay? Um, and you have to be focused on your set question, always. Uh, if you go into an exam room with some pre-formulated uh, essay that you're just, you've memorized and you're going to just write it on the paper without really uh, looking at the question that's being asked of you, you will get very few points. Um, you also must make sure that the essay that you write is formal and it is organized, okay? that there is a formal register, an academic voice used in your essay writing, and that it's, and by organized, I mean have a plan. That you're that you're following, uh, you know that you've got a couple different um, key ideas, and and you know what those are before you start, and you order them in a way that you think logically builds, and then also um, your essays. Just as a reminder, are not a summary. You are not summarizing or retelling what happens in the poem, um, or kind of putting the poem into your own words. That is not analytical writing. Okay, so the set question that we're going to, the, that you're going to respond to, that we're going to be using as our example on how to write analytical essays in response to poetry, is uh, what you can see at the top of the slide there. Uh, explore how Dixon presents her childhood in the poem Plenty. Okay? Um, Cambridge might throw in a vividly in front of presents. I haven't included it, but I wouldn't put it past them, you know, it, how Dixon vividly portrays, uh, or sorry, presents her childhood. Um, 
and vividly simply means like bring it to life. Um, you can like you can almost see it when you read her poetry. Okay, um, so what we want to do first is read through the poem, and while we're reading through the poem, I want you asking yourselves uh, questions like. Uh, or just keeping it, you know, centered in your mind as you're reading it. Um, how does she present her childhood? What does she show the reader about her childhood? How is it presented? Okay. Now there's there's loads of things going on in this um, poem, but the focus that they want you to, um, you know, it, whatever set question is, that's that's where what you need to focus on when you respond. It. You can't just pick your favorite things to talk about unless you can connect them to um, what the set question is asking about. Now, the key words in this set question, um, the most key word, <laughs> is childhood, okay? The poet's childhood is being presented, and that is what your essay needs to focus on. Um, we're being asked how, how it's presented, and um, of course, it's how does the poet Dixon do it? Notice how the poet is just referred to by her last name. And I will remind you about this at the end of this uh, series, but when we refer to poets, playwrights, authors, um, I've probably told you this before, we either refer to them by their full names, you could talk about, you could refer to her as Isabel uh, Dixon, or you simply refer to her by her last name, Dixon. Do not refer to her by her first name only. Okay, that is not formal. Um, all right, so we're going to read <clears throat> the poem. And as I read it, I want you thinking, how is she presenting her childhood? What is she showing me about the, her childhood? Okay? Well, the arrow doesn't want to flick down. There we go. Okay. So with fresh fresh eyes, we're going to look at this poem again. What do you learn about her childhood? Now, if you've got a fresh sheet, um, a fresh copy of the poem, you could make these notes, you know, all along the side. Just you're responding. I learned this. I see this about the childhood. Okay. As you go through, uh, as we're reading it out loud. If you don't have a fresh copy, um, just keep a, just go ahead and um, write your ideas down in your exercise book. You simply could, you know, put numbers one through eight for stanzas. Okay, there's eight stanzas. And uh, you could make observations or uh, make connections with how her child is, childhood is presented or what do I learn about her childhood in each stanza. Okay, so either way will work. The idea is responding. You're with your own thoughts because I'm going to share my thoughts, but I want you to practice making your own observations first. Okay, so um, I, I won't read too fast so that you've got some time, but then when I'm finished reading the poem, I want you to pause the video and write down your observations. Okay, because you will come up with things or word it in a way that connects with something you're noticing, and that's important to record. Okay, plenty. When I was young, and there were five of us, all running riot to my mother's quiet despair, our old enamel tub, age stained and pocked upon its griffin claws, was never full. Such plenty was too dear in our expanse of drought, where dams leaked dry and windmills stalled like mommy's smile. Her lips stretched back and anchored down in anger at some fault of mine, I thought, not knowing then it was a clasp to keep us all from chaos. She saw it always, snapping locks and straps, the spilling, sums and worries, shopping lists, for aspirin, porridge, petrol, bread, even the toilet paper counted. And each month was weeks too long. Her mouth a lid clamped hard on this. We thought her mean, skipped chores, swiped biscuits, 
best of all, when she was out of earshot, stole another precious, in precious inch up to our chests. Such a lovely sin, lolling luxuriant in secret warmth, disgorged from fat brass taps, our old compliant co-conspirators. Now bubbles lap my chin. I'm a sybarite. A sh the shower's a hot cascade and water's plentiful to excess almost here. I leave the heating on and miss my scattered sisters, all those bathroom squabbles, and at last my mother's smile loosed from the bonds of lean, dry times and our long childhood. Okay, so like I said before, um, I want you to either back up the video right now and, and kind of listen through again and hit pause when a thought comes to you and jot it down. Um, or just pause the video right now and do your own read through, your own scan, and write down your ideas. Um, and again, it, you want a bunch of ideas that answer the question, um, how does... How does Dixon present or portray her childhood in this poem? Maybe you could think of it in terms like Dixon, I mean, you don't have to write this on the side of your poem, but, you know, thought-wise, like Dixon presents her childhood as a time when, or a time that was uh, a, or as, you know, or if you, you know, something, a strong adjective comes to mind um, or something like that. Those are the kinds of things you want to be able to say because you want to turn these observations quite easily into point statements, okay? Remember, every point sentence of every paragraph in your essay is an answer to the question. So if the question is, how does or explore how Dixon presents her childhood, um, then you want to be able to answer each one. Well, she presents her childhood as this. She presents her childhood as this, okay? Those are the, you want to finish that sentence right now with the observations that you make, okay? So pause the video, and when you're done with writing down your ideas, turn me back on. Okay, I'm, sh I'm sure you have lots of great ideas, and I'm sure that some of them will be very similar to some of mine. Okay, I've tried to make a little mind map, or what is supposed to be a mind map here, um, and I've, I've come up with seven ideas that I could select from for my PEE paragraphs. Okay, um, now you'll see that some of them are maybe uh, related to it. I, I might end up deciding to put them together in a PE paragraph if I thought, you know, the two ideas were closely enough related. Um, or maybe I'll ditch one or two of them and say, nah, I don't like that idea. Actually, uh, it's uh, or it's too close to this one, so I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna uh, scratch that one off. So hopefully, you have at least four ideas, or maybe my list can help you fill yours out. Okay. So obviously, uh, one of the first things that's noticeable is that the childhood of the poet was a time that was really stressful for the mom. Or maybe you have a word like difficult for the mom. Um, the poet's childhood was um, hard for the mom. Okay, so all those kinds of things, ideas, you know, same, same thing. Okay, and you probably use similar um, quotes to support that. Um, another, another two that are are noticeable early on in the poem, especially in the first half, are um, ideas about the fact that the poet's childhood was a time of financial hardship. Or um, maybe you have something you know along the lines of that they were a family that was poor, or she, was, she grew up in a family 
um, that didn't have much, okay, or where money was tight, okay, something like that. Um, same, same thing, okay. Um, and then also, this is really related to this one, but um, there is the idea of her childhood being a time when there just wasn't enough. Um, I think there's a lot of evidence for both of these that they probably could be treated separately, but you can decide if there's other things that you want to talk about and if these are kind of really closely related and so you kind of group them together. Um, it's up to you. You're going to you're gonna decide uh, for yourself which, which ones you want to um, tackle. All right. Um, and then the other idea that I had was that the uh, poet's childhood, she almost, I don't know if battle's the right word, but it was what I could come up with. It's a, you know, that there's this us against her um, conflict with the kids versus mom, okay? That mom's the enemy and they're all, that sense of them all together uh, kind of ganged up against her. There's plenty to discuss with that one as well. Okay, and then um, these these are uh, the bottom, the, the ones here at the bottom are ones that are, would you contrast, okay? You'd find quotes um, in the be, in the first six stanzas and compare to the last two stanzas, or you might make uh, observations about how she talks. Even some of the things she refers to in the first six stanzas shows that she knows better now. Okay, so um, and one of those major ones is that, uh, or one of the points has to do with that is that her childhood was a time that she views differently now as an adult, okay? We get the contrast between her childish viewpoint and her now mature um, adult viewpoint. You could also explore how her childhood is, a, is presented as a time that is in contrast to her life of plenty as an adult. And, and maybe you compare these two uh, together that her childhood was a time when there was never enough, and that is contrasted now to her how she uh, lives in, as an adult. And the idea of the interplay between those, how her child her childhood of of want um, impacts the way she views um, life and resources as an adult. Okay, now you want to. Stay focused on how she presents childhood, but um, one idea that's there is that she presents the shaping force of childhood. The, the idea that her childhood shaped who she is and how she sees things, okay? Uh, especially this idea like that she calls herself a sybarite for now taking, you know, long showers and, you know, bubble baths up to her chin. Okay, that's like full-on luxury. Um, because she grew up poor, uh, she sees that now as an adult as a luxury. All right, and then lastly, I think something that really comes through in the end is that uh, her child, she presents her childhood as a time that she looks back on with fondness, okay? The idea of nostalgia. All right, I wanna take you through I'm going to take three of these bubbles, okay, and I'm going to show you where you, examples of how you might look at the poem and collect um, support for these ideas or what you might explore, okay? First off, we've got this idea of um, the uh, childhood of the poet is a stressful time for the mom, okay? And I, I put this, the, this list uh, on each of these slides so that you will remember that it's not, you, it's not just language that you're looking for. You're looking for any, anything you can, um, you know, structure might come into um, supporting this point. Language choices, of course. Um, imagery or, you know, um, 
any personification, metaphor, simile, sensory appeal, uh, any of those things we would categorize as imagery might support this. Um, we might find support for this, or she, the poet might use her tone to uh, support or to express this. And sometimes sound effects, you know, rhyme, alliteration, um, any of the sound effects that uh, we listed before could play a part. So I, all this is here to do is to remind us uh, that we can be looking for more than just like the word, the phrase, okay? We need to be thinking about all these aspects because all these aspects are tools that a poet can use to create effects that their poetry creates. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we, this first idea or first observation or first uh, way that we would answer the question, the poet presents her childhood as a time that was stressful for her mom, or fill in the, fill in the blank with another, you know, adjective. Okay, so the places that we see this difficulty for the mom in, and you might find others, but I have highlighted the quotes or the places that I would look to or that I think this difficulty stress um, comes out for the mom. Um, first being this second line, all running riot to my mother's quiet despair. Okay? We get this, uh, all of them, like you get this vision of them like running circles around the mom and the mom just kind of in the center um, in this, you know, emotional um, kind of hopeless state, <laughs> okay? Um, we've got some emotive language in quiet despair, running riot uh, has some nice sound effects. Um, and then if you move on down to second stanza, I've highlighted windmills stalled like mommy's smile. That's a simile that uh, just like a windmill that's meant to be spinning in the wind and has stopped, mommy's smile has stopped. Okay? It's um, stalled out. It's, uh, it's not that it, maybe she doesn't smile, but these, these times of not having enough stall her smile. And right after that, you see her lips stretched back and anchored down. More imagery that we talked about last week that is pretty strong visual representation of the mom's stress. Um, she uses the emotive word anger. The, the mom looks angry all the time. We understand from the poet's writing and the poet's adults and point of view that it was really stress and responsibility uh, that made the mom seem angry. But that, that's the look that she had on her face all the time. And so if someone constantly looks um, angry, their face isn't smiling, and their lips stretched back and anchored down, uh, you, you, you get the visual of her face. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, sh it's a, a show don't tell <laughs> almost kind of thing where the poet is actually showing you um, how the mom's feeling. And, and through those, uh, when we visualize her face, we understand mom's having a rough time, okay? Um, I think this uh, phrase, metaphor, especially with the alliteration, uh, emphasizing some key words, clasp to keep us all from chaos, okay? This this facial expression, remember we talked like the, the, the her, her mouth actually looks like a lid or something clamped down, okay? That, that her mouth, okay, which is really a representation of her stress, but her, you know, kind of holding tight and trying to keep control on everything is being compared to a clasp. And if that clasp should, you know, break open or become unlatched, um, like the whole family, the whole thing will go to chaos. Right? Already sounds like it's chaotic, um, but 
it's the mom's control over the finances and making sure there's enough supplies in the house and that everybody has something to eat and everybody has toilet paper to use um, that it's being compared to a clasp. Uh, and it, what it's keeping them from is chaos, okay? That's a dramatic word, chaos is. Um, but the, this idea that it's hard for her, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of responsibility. Okay, I'm gonna keep going because I, I can go on and on. But um, again, the uh, there's a lot of these <laughs> about her face that you could talk about. You don't have to talk about them all, okay? I'm pointing out things you could choose from, okay? Um, remember, in a PEE paragraph, you at least need one quote, but two or three would will make a stronger um, piece of writing, okay? You're not just supporting your idea with one um, quote. You're supporting it with lots of uh, examples. Make sure those you don't, you don't just list the quotes though. You know, I can see this when she says this, this, and this. And there you go. Okay, that, that's just, um, that's point and evidence, but no analysis. So you've got to choose the ones that you think you can offer some um, thoughtful and um, Tech, you know, to some degree, technical analysis, okay? But at, but at minimum, you should at least be trying to simply answer the how, okay? How the metaphor shows that, this, that their childhood was a hard time for the mom, okay? Another thing you might use is her, her mouth a lid clamped hard, okay? Again, with the mom's mouth and this idea that she has this hard expression, um, that she's trying to keep it all under control. And then I have a few at the, in the second half. Um, this idea of that because of all this, all this stress and all this um, pressure that the mom was under, um, that, that, that she came across as mean, okay? That the, that the perception of the kids was that she was mean and that she was angry, okay? And then lastly, uh, the last <laughs> phrase of the poem, the poet refers to their childhood as long, okay? And it's, it's what the mom's smile has been loosed from, but that, it, that their childhood was a long time and um, their mom, <laughs> that she endured um, probably what, you know, when there was five of them and, you know, all of them together, and um, the times were dry and lean financially, uh, made it seem even longer, I'm sure. Okay, keep, we need to keep going. Um, so another point that you might, you know, one of your points might have been similar to this, or you like, oh, I like that idea from Mrs. Pringle's ideas, was um, she, the poet presents her childhood as a time that she views differently now as an adult, okay? This one, we can get a little bit into some structure ideas, okay? Um, mostly because we've got, you know, the first, we talked about last week how the first six stanzas focus on her uh, when she's a child and mostly comes from her, like a, she adopts kind of a childlike perspective or she tries to go back and, and express how she saw it as a child. And then she, and then you've got um, adult perspective here too. However, there's little bits that come through like not knowing then um, that, ex that show that she knows more now. Okay, now a structure point that you could make is simply how the first, how the poem starts with the phrase, when I was young, and the, at the volta, or shift, that happens at the beginning of um, stanza seven, we have this um, adverb now, okay? Um, now, we also have the shift in uh, verb tenses as well, but um, it's a nice structure comment to to show that she's expressing one perspective at the in the first six stanzas, and that the um, 
well, the perspective switches at this at the volta with the word now. Okay, the, those are um, nice technical analytical terms um, to use, and it's a structure uh, point that you could include in your essay. Um, now, some of these that I've highlighted like such plenty was too dear in our expansive drought. She's talking about the view she had when she was young as a child and as a family. Um, a full bathtub was not something they could afford. It was too dear, too expensive, too luxurious for the, for, for the life they were living. Okay, and then if you, like, that was her childhood, her family perspective, and then you've, um, you know, you've got this um, contrasted to her short statement here, I am a Sybarite. The fact that, I mean, we, I mean, you could use some of the details from the bubble bath and the shower and, and all that, but the fact that she, she calls herself a Sybarite, and if you recall, that means someone dedicated to luxury and pleasure, okay? That, which is, is a little bit of, you know, exaggeration here, that just because she takes bubble baths now and long hot showers and doesn't really have to worry about the water bill like her parents did, that that makes her a sybarite, okay? Um, there, there's a contrast, um, but also that shaping factor of how her um, childhood experience um, shapes how she how she viewed life then and now. All right, and then this this middle um, kind of line that straddles these two uh, stanzas in anger at some fault of mine I thought not knowing then. Okay, we get this like looking back sensation that when she was a kid, she thought the mom was mad and she thought the mom was mad at something she'd done. That she felt like it was her fault. Okay, but this uh, not knowing then uh, gives us that indication that now as an adult, she sees this truth. It was a clasp to keep us all from chaos that, that what it was was stress. What it was was mom trying to keep it all together, okay? Mom trying to hold the family together, okay? Mom wasn't mad at, you know, her spilling, you know, all of her milk so much as she was just stressed about not having enough. Okay, and then um, I have this highlighted again. We thought her mean, okay? She, and, and it's obviously written in past tense as these stanzas are. But the fact that it is written in, in past tense shows that she realizes now that she wasn't. She, it's not that she was mean. She was stressed, okay? <laughs> she was do, trying to do what she could, okay? But they just, they, in their childish perspective, they read it as mean and stingy. Um, and then um, this perspective that's given here too at the end. At last, my mother's smile loosed from the bonds of lean, dry times. She understands that the whole reason the mom looked angry all the time, or she had this mad look on her face, what, what kept her mouth tied down in that was lean, dry times. Okay, that's referring to their financial status <laughs> and our long childhood, <laughs> meaning lots of kids. Um, you know, the childhood lasted a long time. If you have two children, the childhood period doesn't last as long. Well, when you have five children, um, you know, the, the era of your life that's spent cleaning up messes and changing diapers and all that kind of stuff lasts a lot longer, okay? And and, and the fact that with so many children, not having enough um, probably made it feel even longer, okay? Um, and this idea of, you know, each month was weeks too long, like each month was something to be survived. Okay, one last one, and then we'll um, 
finish off this video and start a new one. Um, we, what we have here, the last one I picked was a time she looks back on with fondness. And like I said, mainly this is found in the end when the tone turns a little bit more nostalgic, but there are a few places you can see it before just at the end, okay? And that's why I chose this one, because I think this one's maybe a bit um, tricky. And if you just looked at this and talked about the, you know, her missing her sisters and her mother, that's fine. That's a good place to start. But um, think, about, too, about the comparison of the when I was young and five of us, okay, that this idea of, I mean, first of all, you got the nostalgia of when I was a kid, okay, um, that's a very nostalgic way to start kind of remembering back, okay, and this idea of the contrast between five of us, okay, that, and, and, and then all the pronouns that she uses, we, our, us, okay, it's, it's she and her sisters, they're together, okay, um, and now, I don't know if you can notice, but this eye I've highlighted with the blue um, is the contrast of the, she looks on it back with fondness and maybe some nostalgia because of the togetherness. And now she's on her own, okay? Now that happens to a lot of people. You, um, you grow up together and you don't always live, you know, next door with your brothers and sisters <laughs> the rest of your life. Um, and so there's, um, a fondness in her looking back to their times together, okay? And especially we can, we can see when she uses the word scattered, okay? My scattered sisters. Here we are five of us, okay? In, in uh, all together, <laughs> in, our, um, in our childhood, in our squabbles, okay? And I don't know if she, um, all the bathroom squabbles, if she's referring to... Um, you know, squabbles with her sister, but I would say this, if, if, they, if there was all this fuss about not having your bathtub too full and then them trying to steal extra, um, you know, inches for their bath, likely there was squabbles with their mom, too, about how deep their bath water was. But the fact that she calls it a squabble keeps it light, okay? Here, remember last week I said, you know, she makes it sound kind of all exaggerated and like she's committing high-level crime. Um, but we have to look at the tone um, that comes across in some of her language choices. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute when I talk about these other things I've highlighted, but squabbles would be a part of that. That squabbles shows that, that even when they were in conflict, it, it, it wasn't that bad. She, and, and especially now that she looks back at it, she just thinks of it as minor, okay? And, and so it's not like, oh, it was so bad. Even though she's talking about lean, dry times, she misses it, okay? And she misses her mom's smile that was eventually loosed after some of the harder times of her, you know, maybe it was, you know, a period of time where the time where things were especially tough, and, and then eventually um, that financial stress was relieved. Okay, because she does say that her mom's smile was loosed. Okay, the mom's smile came back, and again, and so again, you have that sense of of something she's fond or positive about or nostalgic for. Okay, the other thing I want to to, you see all these words I have in blue. Um, well, I have the we because of the pronoun that's connecting to five of us versus the I of the, the later part of the poem. But I've highlighted skipped and swiped um, as examples that go along with kind of like squabble. Like, yes, it's a little bit of conflict of kids versus mom, but she uses words that again, make it sound playful or not too bad, <laughs> okay? Um, and, and the fact that this, this language choice here where she says, best of all, another precious inch, lovely sin, such lovely sin, lolly and luxuriant and secret warmth, this is actually a really positive memory for her, especially the way that she's describing it, especially best 
of all, like one of the best things that, you know, she could do when she was a kid or something she remembers fondly was when mom's not listening, putting an extra inch in the bathtub and how luxuriant that felt, how warm she was, you know, covered just that much more in the bath water, okay? Um, and, and so it's like a fond memory of um, baths when she was a kid. Okay, we're gonna bring this video to a close. Um, what I'm gonna leave you with is I want you to finish your, your plan. Do this, the same thing that I've just walked you through um, with a couple of my ideas. Do the same thing with the ideas that you came up with that you want to use in your essay, looking for um, points or um, you know the quotes, the exact line or word that you think really shows that idea that you had come up with. All right, and then, and then we'll go to part two.